Depending on your viewpoint, January has been a pretty good month for PSVR 2 or a bit of an iffy month because some people loved Vertigo 2, as did I. I really enjoyed that game. But then Bulletstorm came along and was a bit of a disappointment to me and to a lot of other people. And yeah, Walkabout Mini Golf came and capped off these last couple of days with a really, really good DLC. I encourage you to go check out that video from yesterday if you haven't, because that DLC, oh, it's just amazing. However, let's turn our gaze to the future a little bit more. Because while these third party games for PSVR 2 can be pretty incredible, what has Sony got planned? Well, I'm gonna split this video into two parts. The first of which being my ideal perfect world in which Sony announces their plans for PSVR 2. As unrealistic as some of these predictions may be, it's what I would envision in a perfect world. Something that isn't probably gonna happen in a million years, but what I would really want. And then we're gonna go over my realistic expectations for the year ahead in terms of PSVR 2 and even a couple years into the future because unlike a couple of other headset companies sony seem to be spacing their headsets out quite a fair bit one per console generation really so it's going to be a good what four years until we even maybe see a glimpse of the psvr3 so let's talk of the future over the coming year and a little bit further first of all my unrealistic perfect expectations this is how I see the future going for PSVR 2 in an idealized world. Now, what Sony would do in my eyes to make this a perfect continuation of the launch of PSVR 2 from a great first year would be to open up with a couple of state of plays, teasing some brand new PSVR 2 games, a couple of smaller games, and then maybe teasing one or two big AAA titles, say Spider-Man VR, God of War VR, or maybe a Horizon sequel. I would absolutely love that, even though some people think that series has kind of run its course in VR with Call of the Mountain, I would love a sequel. But any of those big properties, even Last of Us VR, would be incredible. A little tease of something like that to get people hyped up. This would be in the first couple of months of 2024, say into March or April, and then later on in the year, maybe in July, we could get a proper showcase or a state of play dedicated to PSVR 2 showing off those AAA games to their fullest extent, maybe with a release in six months time or so to get people really hyped up as the marketing machine starts again for the AAA PSVR 2 releases. The hype around Horizon in the PSVR 2 community before launch was absolutely massive. And I say that as somebody who was just not in the content creator space when that happened. I was with you guys. I was exactly the same as I basically still am, to be honest. All I do is spout words and videos, but I was in the exact same position as you guys, getting my information as it came, as scarce as it was, and getting really hyped over the launch of AAA PSVR 2 games like Horizon and like Resi 8. We did just get Resident Evil 4, so I'm imagining we're gonna get maybe a few more of those, but in an idealized world, we'd get more standalone made for VR games. And my top two would probably be The Last of Us VR because that would be both really immersive and terrifying and Spider-Man VR. Spider-Man 2 blew me away with its presentation, its gameplay, and imagining that in VR would be so damn good. There was a Spider-Man game for PSVR 1, but it was a demo, it was pretty rough. But in an idealized world, Sony would hype up those, get the marketing machine going on them, and then push them out either at the end of the year or at the start of next year. All of this would be supported by smaller studios and indie studios pushing their games to support the headset between these big releases, with games like Into the Radius and Bone Lab, and even Half-Life Alex getting ported. That would be my ideal run for the next year of this amazing headset. However, Reality isn't so giving as that, so let's go over what I actually think will happen. Instead of a state of play or two dedicated to PSVR 2 and then a showcase with a big game, I think we'll be getting continual state of plays as we usually do with one or two PSVR 2 games announced at each. Indie studios will keep announcing their games in between these and at these shows and at third party shows like the PSVR Without Parole Awards and the Upload VR Showcase. Sony will tease something big, I really do believe that, but I think it will probably be just one game maybe for this year that they've poured a lot of money into in the AAA VR gaming space. I'm not expecting any more. Believe me, I would love for there to be more, uh, but I'm not sure if I see that happening. Maybe a couple of lower funded games like Firewall Ultra. I know that's not the best example given how that game's just gone, but I'm talking that level of integration with Sony rather than the end product itself. But as for big AAA VR games, I could see them doing maybe one this year and that's me tempering my expectations to a realistic level. As for Half-Life Alex, I would not see that coming over unless Valve really try and 
pull some strings in an agreement. I'm assuming Sony would want that on the PSVR 2 and so would the player base, but it's all really up to their communication and negotiation with Valve at the end of it all really. As for other games like Bone Lab, although Stress Level Zero did look at porting the game over, there hasn't been any news on that front, so I really don't think we'll be getting that anytime soon at least, partly because of the hassle of mod support. However, the smaller indie games will be coming over, and these are nothing to really smirk at. They're really good games. We have some great ones coming up over the next coming year. Ghost of Tabor is a big one I'm looking forward to, and there's many more on the way. Now, I could see there being an announcement for PSVR 2 when the PS5 Pro gets shown off, though, in the future. Maybe an announcement that with the PS5 Pro, the PSVR 2 will run without reprojection. And to be honest, that might tip me over the edge to sell my PS5 and buy a PS5 Pro, because imagining Horizon Call of the Mountain and Resident Evil 4 and 8 without reprojection would be amazing. I really do see that happening with the extra power of the Pro, and that would tip me over the edge in getting one. It really would. That sort of tech really, really excites me in terms of cutting down that reprojection. And my one other prediction for this year will be that we also get a little bit of a refinement of the reprojection on PSVR 2. I think it was the devs of Hubris came out and said that Sony were looking into kind of cutting down on reprojection, making it a lot more reasonable to manage and less harsh and noticeable as the Meta Quest headsets do. Their reprojection is not as bad as the PSVR 2. And I think Sony are really looking into that at the moment in terms of how to make that better. And I think over the next coming year, we could really get an update and a patch push through, maybe even quietly, that makes reprojection a lot more manageable for us who uh, either get affected by it or notice it quite badly during gameplay. As for some final predictions, I think Phasmophobia will launch this year. I think Ghost of Tabor will launch in the next three months. And I think Rec Room will have a drop this year. I have no insider information on any of these. Those are just my predictions, but I'm hoping for them. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other predictions for what Sony is going to do and what you would like them to do over the next year, because I'd love to hear them. Any games you want ported into VR, do let me know. It'd be really cool to see what you guys think. Thank you all for watching once again, and I hope to see you all in the next video.